Hey, what's the largest problem you're facing right now with your junk removal business? Are you still researching the business and you're looking, hey, where do I get started? Are you not getting enough jobs? Are you slam busy and you're having to turn away work, but you don't know how to take it to the next level, how to hire crews and get more trucks? Are you worried that the crews you have aren't doing a great job or maybe even stealing from you? These are all problems that every junk removal business owner is gonna face as they grow. These are problems I've had and I've learned how to solve. The solutions can be found in the complete junk removal business training series. Grow your business, change your life with the JRA Complete Training Series. Welcome, welcome. It is Tuesday, 12 noon Eastern time. And what does that mean? That means it is time to talk a little junk on Let's Talk Junk, brought to you by Junk Removal Authority. So uh, in the description on this video, we do want to start kind of answering some questions you guys might have. So if you guys have some kind of more in-depth questions you'd like actually like us to make a video on or put together an article on, make sure to click the link below and you can submit some of your questions. Today, what we're going to be talking about is uh, how to keep a little bit of that money you're making, how to make sure people aren't stealing from you, and specifically employees. So for you guys out there, you, you're, you're paying, all these junk removal business owners, we're, we're constantly paying money out to everybody. You know, we might bring in $300 for a job, $1,000 for a job, but out of that, we're paying employees on the payroll end. We've got workers' compensation insurance. It's absolutely through the roof. Vehicle insurance going way up. You guys that are new, you're writing with Progressive. Most of you are. You're with Progressive starting out. Man, they're, they're ripping us a new one on the junk removal industry. So a lot of money's going out on insurance. That Google bill, that acquisition cost, that's, that's a lot's running out there. Uh, tire shops, getting nails in tires, having to replace tires. So every time you turn around, money is going out. You bring money in, and then it goes out. So... The goal, obviously, is to keep as much of that as you possibly can and reinvest back into your business for growth or take out and use for living expenses. The goal is not to uh, uh, have employees potentially uh, steal from you. And the vast majority of the time, the most employees you get, if you do a decent job on hiring, are going to be pretty good. They're going to be pretty honest. They're going to want to do the right thing. And as long as you kind of take care of them, for the most part, they won't necessarily steal from you. But if you make it too easy on them, if you make it seem that you're not looking and you would have you have got no idea of what's kind of going on, it begins to be just a little too tempting, a little too easy. And even somebody that's pretty daggone down the straight and narrow, good individual, ethical person, if they're tempted, uh, tempted enough without knowing repercussions and knowing that there's steps being in place to make sure stuff isn't occurring, uh, they might actually start to steal from you. So what we're going to do over today is how to prevent employee theft. This applies even if you're a single truck operator. Hopefully as a single truck operator, you want to eventually get to the point where you have employees. And obviously if you already have done a great job, you've gotten off the truck and you're no longer doing all the jobs, then this is really right up your alley. So there are two common types of theft in junk removal. So it's not just the obvious one, which is money theft. First one is money theft. Two common types. I might have said two types. There are two common types. There's obviously tool theft and, or some inventory theft and all like that. Um, but it's money theft. The second one is time theft. And I'll put as a minor one down here, I, I kind of included in under time theft, but some companies, some of you guys have a model where you're actually keeping the stuff and you're reselling it, or you're very much making sure everything gets donated and can possibly be donated, recycled, whatever. So the last thing, uh, which I think is smaller for most junk removal companies, but item theft. So generally what this is, is this is an employee that uh, is taking the stuff that you got off the job, keeping it for themselves, possibly reselling it or just, just using it. So we're gonna dive into each one of these. All right, the first one that I actually wanna break down um, and kind of explain a little bit on is, uh, is, is, is time theft. So before we get into money theft, which is the obvious one, time theft is probably actually costing a lot more people money than money theft is. 
So examples of time theft are going to be clocking in slash out uh, before or after you are working or done working. Before slash after work has started or been completed. Common scenarios on this, it's pretty obvious, but somebody says, hey, you know, I'm, supposed, I'm doing it at 7 o'clock, 7.30, whatever, and they clock in 10 minutes early. They report 10 minutes early. And 10 minutes isn't a whole lot of time, but 10 minutes every single day uh, throughout the course of the year, especially if you have multiple employees doing it, that's a, that's a big, big deal. The other um, area is uh, forgetting to clock out. I'm going to put forgetting in quotation marks. So sometimes people honestly forget to clock in or out. Other times they're dishonest. And what they're wanting to do is they know that you don't know exactly when they're there. So they tell you a different time and you have to correct it. So we're going to address how to, how to, how to, how to kind of fix some of those issues as well. I mentioned the keeping the items on the truck. I'm going to put that on here because this almost is more time theft for most of us than anything. Keeping items on truck. And um, slowing down so another crew gets the job. Slowing down or delaying. And guys, if you have any questions throughout today's episode, whether it's around employee theft or something else related to your junk removal business or anything else, feel free to post them in the comments. I'd love to get some, to get some uh, great questions today. All right. So this is the most, your most common time theft right here. How can we help? How can we prevent this time theft? One of the first things you can do in terms of clocking in and out before or after uh, work started or completed is, is using an app like T-Sheets or ADP. If you use T-Sheets or ADP, they have a geo fence. What you can do on that app is you can say that I only want to allow employees to clock in or clock out one quarter mile from my office. You might be able to narrow it down a little bit more, but we do one quarter mile. So that means on their phone, they have an app on their phone, and on their phone, they go to the ADP app or the T-Sheets app. They go to clock in. It's going to say, hey, uh, is it okay if I track where your location is? They're going to say yes, and as long as they uh, say yes, it's going to, and they're within that geofence, it'll allow them to clock in, clock out. If it is not within that geofence, then they can't actually clock in or out. So that's one of the great ways of preventing this. Forgetting to clock in and out, uh, you just got, you got to limit people. It's like three times a, like a year. You, you get three times in a year to forget to clock in or forget to clock out. And e each time it's getting tallied. Hey, this is your second, this is your third. And on the fourth occurrence, uh, a lot of times it's a, it's a warning my, and even a suspension. Hey, if, you, if you're getting on fourth time, listen, this is your final warning on this. You need to take the next, next few shifts off and, and that's it. You know, three occurrences in one year, the fourth final warning. And fifth time, you say, listen, you know, I'm, I, I'm sorry, but there's too much time that we are wasting. If you can't clock in and out, I'm having to go back and waste all this time correcting your time. And also, if you can't pay attention to that detail, making sure you're getting paid and getting paid accurately, what other detail are you missing that I'm not even aware of? So whether you have that conversation or not, that's what, that is the expectations that's set. And if you do that, people are going to not forget to clock in and out. And if you let that guy go, you let other people know, hey, the reason he was let go is, is uh, he kept forgetting to clock in and out. You know, kind of let that spread throughout so people know that you're serious about it. So limit three per year. Keeping items on the truck. This depends on the policy that you as a junk removal business owner have. So um, with us, our policy on it, we don't resell. We will donate and recycle. You know, um, if it makes sense, if it's a sizable amount of stuff, it's gonna reduce disposal fees. If it's really, really nice, the majority of the load's donatable, we're, we're gonna take off the donation center and donate it. 
but we don't ever resell items. So our policy with our employees and our team is you can keep something just so long as the customer, you didn't tell the customer you're going to donate it, and uh, it's not going to cost us any more money for you to keep it. Situations it might cost you more money is if it's a really nice couch and there's still more jobs to go that day and all they have is that one couch because uh, one or two things is going to happen. They're going to leave it on the truck and they're going to risk getting to a job where there's not enough space to finish and all of a sudden, all right, now you're having to dump and come back and that's also bad for customer satisfaction. The other thing that occurs, they take it by their home, their apartment, their store, a storage facility, whatever, and they drop it off. Well, that's time. That, that's when it falls under time theft, potentially. What we do, though, is we tell people, if it doesn't cost us more money, if it can fit in the cab of the truck or in the toolbox, as long as you empty it out at the end of the day, it's yours to keep. Um, if you have something really nice you definitely want to keep, check with dispatch. Check with your supervisor and say, hey, uh, this is item. I'd love to keep it. Um, I can drop it off in my apartment. My apartment's here. Next job's here. We could dump, or you know, we could drop it off my apartment, then go dump, then go to the next job, and shouldn't you know really add a whole lot of time. And it's up to the supervisor at that point to say, yeah, you know what, that's okay this time, or no, that's not. And if somebody's repeatedly asking for this, it gets to be a nuisance. But if it's every once in a while you've got one guy that just finds something he really really likes, then we try and kind of work him in. So that's how we handle it. For those of you guys that are reselling items. Technically, once, and, and, and when you onboard employees at the start, you want to have them sign a form saying this, that they understand this. Once you get items from a customer and those items hit the back of your truck, they go into the back of your truck, at that point you've taken possession of those items. Those items are actually legally the businesses. It's the business owners, it's you as the business owner, those are your items. So at that point in time, if that's how you're operating and they've got, everybody signed off on that, they understand that. Uh, if employees do anything with those items that you don't want them to do, whether it be they keep them, resell them, whatever, it's actually theft. They're stealing inventory from you. You've taken possession of these items and it's up to you to decide what you want to do with them. If you want to give them to them, you can. Again, check with supervisor. If you want to resell them, then they're expected to bring them back and drop them off. Or if you want to dump them, you want to trash them, it's your items to do what you want to do with them, while, especially while they're on your truck. So if they take them off, it's theft. And they need to make, you need to set expectations beforehand that they really understand that. So they don't think they're just doing something minor that's not that big of a deal if that's the way you're going to operate. So keeping items on truck is just setting expectations and, and sticking with them. If you've got somebody, if they understand that, hey, they went and did something they weren't supposed to, they took this couch by their apartment and they didn't get approval from the supervisor, uh, that's theft. That's theft. And that means that you know, there no, should be no tolerance on theft. Slowing down and delaying. Again, time theft here. Um, the most common thing that occurs here is when you have a multi-truck operation. You normally don't see this on a single truck operation because they know they've got to get their jobs done for that day. But once you get up to two trucks, what happens is invariably, everybody always thinks the other truck is doing less than they are. Constant, I don't care who it is. You can have two trucks running, and uh, at some point in time, TL1 and TL2 on the exact same day are gonna be complaining about how little the other truck's doing. This doesn't always happen, but from time to time, somebody's having a bad day and it's gonna line up. They don't necessarily know, unless you're telling them, what the other truck's got going on. So what we like doing when we're doing dispatch is we actually like informing people why, the decision, why we're making the decisions we make. Hey, um, you're taking this job right here because uh, truck, you're taking the job from truck two, we're getting added onto your schedule because truck two is on like a four load job that's absolutely killing them and they just need some help. So we need to rotate this over to them, just over to you, just to make sure we get this job done. So we, you kind of want to explain things. If you find people slowing down and delaying, it's theft, and they need to be told beforehand, employee manual beforehand, that this is something that's not tolerated, that this is considered time theft if you're, if you're slowing down on purpose in order to not have to, to get a job at the end of the day for it to go onto another truck. That is, that is uh, very much time theft. Now, guys are going to slow down as the day goes on. You're, you're fresh at the start, you're gonna have a little bit of fatigue later on. So the only time that we ever consider this really time theft 
is if you have somebody over, you heard or somebody else heard, you have evidence, you have a camera in your truck where you overheard, where there's verifiable uh, intent for them to slow down with the intention being not getting a job, not having to do a job. That is considered another time theft. And with anything with theft, there's a no tolerance policy, one and you're done. You got any questions? Hey guys, if you've got any questions at all, please make sure you post them in the comments. Love to hear from you guys uh, during these shows and help out uh, kind of anywhere we, any way we can. So uh, that, that right there was covering time theft. Now let's jump in over to money theft and cover the, the situations that money theft might actually occur. So to kind of set the stage, the most common money theft, the most common money theft is uh, on cash jobs. So it's a cash job and what occurs is uh, team reports income as lower than they collected. So, let me give you a scenario here. Uh, Joe, let's just randomly pick a Joe. I've never had a, I don't think we've ever had a Joe work for us, so we're gonna, we're gonna pick on Joe. Joe, uh, Joe calls us up and, uh, uh, or Joe shows up on site. He's going to a, to a, to a pickup. And he gets there and uh, he looks around and it's a $400, say it's a $400 job. What he does is he goes to the customer and he says, hey, this is gonna be a $400 job. And um, you know, it's a, it's a three quarter load, whatever, it's gonna be $400. So then Joe goes off and does the job. And at the very end of the job, uh, the customer pays $400. Well, Joe, what he does is he goes on workies or he goes on your paper invoices or whatever and he writes up an invoice for $200. And he pockets the difference. Maybe he gives half to his navigator, his, his helper, or maybe he doesn't even tell the navigator and helper, and the, and the navigator helper has no idea what's going on. He simply sticks 200 in his pocket, and he puts 200 um, uh, to the company. The next scenario is related to this, but the customer. So it's a, it, a lot of times in this case, it's add-on items and the customer offers a cash discount. And the customer probably knows what they're doing here, but maybe they don't. So let's say Joe's gone, he's quoted this job at 400. He had him sign off on it. Uh, sign off on the 400, loads everything up, and it comes to be $400. Then, at the final walkthrough on the job, Joe, uh, Joe's walking with the customer on the final walkthrough of the job and the customer sees a few other things they'd like to add. And they say, well, I'd like to add this item, this item, this item, and, and it comes to be maybe another $50. And Joe, and Joe says, yeah, you know what? I'd be happy to take that for you. It's just gonna be $50. Uh, $50 extra, we'll get that loaded up and be on our way. So you total that'd be 450. And, and the customer at that point says, well, I'll tell you what, how about I just give you $20 cash? and y'all just take it. And at that point, Joe says, hey, you know what, that sounds pretty good, we'll just do that. So, um, or it's 20, 30, 40, whatever, they offer some sort of a discount. This, it, this one's a little bit harder to find because the customer is actually initiating it and they probably know what they're doing, they probably know that the employees are just gonna keep it and it's not gonna get reported back. But it might take them another 10 or 15 minutes to load up that $50 worth of stuff, they split it, they stick it in their pocket. That one is harder to find. There's still ways to do it, but that one's harder to find because it doesn't happen all the time consistently. It's hard to see a trend and also the customer initiated it. So that is another common uh, money theft um, issue. So these are going to be your most common. The other one is, and this is one of the reasons you don't want your truck guys, as a general rule, you don't want the guys that are answering your phones actually going out and doing the job. Because this is, I don't even know how we want to classify this, but this is essentially dispatch conspires with truck team. Now in this case, 
the dispatch and the truck team is probably the same person. This is why, again, never, almost never, ne on a consistent basis, never have your truck team answering your phones, booking jobs, and doing the job. Because here's what occurs. They get a phone call and they schedule, uh, they get a phone call and then on a sheet of paper, they're not going through your scheduling system or whatever like that. On a Google calendar, on a sheet of paper, they write down all the customer's information. They get it all down, they get the address down, they get the items down, they get it all scheduled, they get a time down. Never hits your system. Never goes in workies. By the way, if you want to check out workies, uh, Matt, make sure we get a link, uh, link on there for workies. They got an awesome promotion running right now. Um, never goes in workies. Never goes in Vonnegut or House Call Pro or whatever. Workies is our, is our preferred one. They then go out and they do the job. They take your truck and you're back there. You, you, you're paying. You, uh, you just, you're just forking, you're forking, forking the money out to go to, uh, go, to, go to fuel. And you're sitting there and you're paying them. They're clocked in. Maybe. Maybe they don't clock in. Maybe they're smart if they don't clock in. But you're, you're paying the wear and tear on the, on the, on the uh, vehicle. If they get an accident, you best damn know, for sure know that your insurance is going to get hit. Guess what? The stuff they pick up, they're taking the disposal fee. They're sticking it on your account. You're paying for the disposal fee. And the only problem with all this is, is they got paid cash. Because what they'll do is they'll say, hey, we don't take cards. You got to pay us cash. So what they do is they take cash. Or maybe they're sophisticated. Maybe they got set up on Square. They got their own little account. They're going to run a credit card, customer's credit card. You never get the income, basically. So they go off, they do a four or $500 job. Maybe they, maybe they discount it, do a cash discount. Uh, we've even heard situations of uh, employees telling customers, never this, actually this one time somebody tried this, well, one time I'm aware of, somebody tried this with junk doctors. Uh, they said, uh, said um, uh, it's cash only, we don't take cards. Uh, follow, I will follow you to an ATM God, this just sounds sleazy and nasty. <laughs> we'll follow you to an ATM. You take the cash out, and uh, you can just pay us at an ATM if you don't have cash on you. And hey, we'll even give you a discount for a cash discount or whatever. So they're getting paid. You're paying all the expenses, but they're getting paid for the job. Now, one of the things you're probably saying, well, I have a phone system. I can tell. Uh, I can listen to phone recordings and all. All they do at that point is they just let it go to a voicemail, and then they, uh, they call them back on their cell phone, and you're none the wiser. So a uh, system of checks and balances, never, ever, 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 ever on a consistent basis have your dispatch, your truck crews be your dispatch, not answering customer calls and booking customer jobs. Never. Otherwise, you're going to get taken to the cleaners. You're going to get wiped out. So these are your most common money theft issues. So how do we, how do we solve, these, solve these money theft issues? Well, I told you before, just never do this. This is just like a, just exit out. Like... Get this through your mind. Never do that. That's like having uh, one. That's like having your bookkeeper pay all your bills, and, you, and there never being a system in there where you're actually verifying who it's going to you yourself or somebody else. There always needs to be checks and balances when it comes to this stuff. Cash job. Team member reports income is lower than collected. All right, listen. Here's 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 what we do on most of these things. Um, I can. You guys probably have this down already if you're keeping notes. So when we come to this part on how to prevent this stuff because this is kind of the title of the show on preventing money theft one of the best things you can do customer always signs quote before job and you need workies on workies before job workies actually time stamps it you can see when that signature was made and you let your employees know, if you do a job before you have a customer signature, unless you have gotten approval from dispatch because they're not there or something like that, and dispatch is going to work to get some sort of an email approval or whatever anyway, because they can actually sign these things electronically. Um, if that's not done, then that's grounds for dismissal. This is very, very important that we do this. It's like a warning, and then you're gone. The second thing is uh, into job pictures. And guys, you, you, you hear me talk a lot about you do this and you're done. 
with, with team members. And it sounds almost uh, too, I don't know, rough or bullish or dictatorship or whatever like that. The entire key to this thing we're going to cover in just a bit because part of this is you being a good leader is going to help reduce theft. Uh, and part of being a good leader is letting your people know expectations, letting them know the rules, what's expected, why it's expected, and uh, being very fair, tell, saying this is what happens if this occurs and sticking to it. That's part of being a good leader. We're going to cover that in just a minute. In the job pictures. And... Um, Follow-up calls. If you do those three things, you're gonna be well on your way to helping prevent um, employee theft. The last thing, and it's actually four things, the last thing is mix up TL nav combinations. So you don't want the same TLs and NAVs working together constantly because then they might team, team up and, and that's when theft is a lot more likely to occur. If you've got uh, just one guy that wants to steal and the other guy isn't in on it, that guy's not going to feel as confident about stealing. It's when you have a, when they team up that it becomes much easier to steal. So you kind of mix these up. All right, so we talked about customers signing the quote on workies before the job. The end of job pictures. On workies, you can actually take a picture of, your, of, of the junk you're removing and you can actually attach it on the uh, job work order within workies. And then what you as your, uh, you, your dispatch or you, if it's you as the dispatch, uh, and, and probably you on a decent amount basis anyway, is you actually need to look at that end of job picture and you compare it to what's quoted. And you say, hey, you know what? There's three quarters load in this truck, but there's only one quarter load uh, there's only there's only one quarter load marked up, so that is uh, that's a big big thing for you to check is those into job into job pictures, uh, and if somebody's off, you're addressing it with them, saying, hey, you know, why are you missing this? It might not be theft. It might be they're just not confident in quoting and they're not great at quoting, and everybody's going to miss one every once in a while. But what you do is you track the difference, so it's a plus or minus deal. If they shorted you a hundred dollars. They're negative 100 that job. They're negative 200 the next job. They, they're actually over 50 on the next job. They're zero on the next job. So you want to see some sort of a clo as close to zero difference as possible. So just to, so you all understand what I'm saying, let's say they do three jobs. The first one, they missed it by $30. Second and third one, they hit it dead on. And on the last one, uh, last two, they were negative 30. You do an average there. You got two zeros, three negative 30s. If you figure out what their average is, it's probably like negative 20 or something like that. So they have a $20 negative uh, as a general rule. That's not too bad. Uh, when you see negative like 50, negative 60, or it depends what your price points are. If you see like, if they're averaging like negative 50 or definitely negative 100, then that's when you, you've got to get in there and you really, really, really uh, need to figure out what's going on. Determine is it a theft situation or is it something else going on? Follow-up calls. Now this works very, very well if the customer isn't in on the theft, so they're not doing the cash discount offer. The way that works is, um, uh, the, the way it works is after the end of every single job, you or dispatch is picking that phone up, and you can record it on workies too, the, com the, the ratings, but you call them and say, hey, Matt, really appreciate your business today. I uh, just want to check in, make sure everything went well with your pickup. If they say yes and all like that, if they say no or whatever, you record the notes down and you address accordingly. But then at the end, question you can ask, and you definitely want to do this on cash jobs, is on a scale of 1 to 10, how do you rate the value you received for the price you paid of $400? And if they're like, well, the value of 400 would have been 10, the problem is I paid 600. Then you know, all right, wait, we got an issue going on here. So. That is uh, follow-up calls. Excellent, excellent, excellent thing to do. Anytime you suspect theft, going to the customers and getting the details is a great way of going about it. I do want to jump on down here to average time on job because for some reason I didn't include that up top. This is a very, very important one. Uh, you need to track the average time on job. You, they, employees can start the job on workies and they can stop it. And you can actually uh, have a system in place where you're tracking the average time that a, uh, that a team leader's on any particular job. 
And if you notice somebody that's consistently uh, to the point where they are, uh, mu they're taking much longer than other individuals to get a particular job done, then you know that you might have a theft situation in here you need to look into. And, why, and that, especially if it corresponds to, a, to job picks being off, your job average being off. That's something you know, you know, we might, we, you kind of know we might have an issue, an issue going on here. Something to keep in mind, and we will be wrapping up the show relatively soon, so if you guys have any questions, make sure you, uh, you post, them, post them in the comments section. If you guys got any comments, man, if you find this stuff to be valuable, make sure you let us know. Give us a thumbs up on here. Give us a little feedback. We always like to know that we're providing value to people. Um, I will also mention, we'll mention at the end of the show, but starting next week, we will be uh, giving away a $50, I don't know how long we're gonna do this, but next week's show, we're gonna be giving away a $50, $50 Visa gift, gift or Amazon, Amazon gift, gift card. card. And uh, what you need to do, Matt, you wanna tell everybody the, the deal on that? Yep, yep. So, so next, next week, week what we're gonna do is, in the first 20 minutes of the show, you will enter through a link in the description of the YouTube video, and then uh, Jesse will put together the names, bring them in in a bowl, and then at some point at the second half of the show, Lee will draw the winning name. And you have to be watching the show at that point to win. Uh, if you're not watching, then we go to the next person. Very, Very good. good. So, so I know some of you guys are on jobs and everything like that, so you might not be able to watch all the time, but maybe sometimes it'll line up. And hey, this is a great way for us to spread the wealth around. For those of you guys that are a little slow out there, you don't have jobs going on, you make a little $50 just by watching the show. All right, so we got background check or background research on employees. When you guys go to hire, uh, we do not do uh, for junk doctors. We don't actually pull a, an official background check anymore because we actually found that we were finding more than they were. We're paying like $80 for background check. At this point, go on Google, type in the guy's name, type in where he's from, type in mugshot or something after, look him up on Facebook. Just, you just do a, spend a little, if you're serious about hiring somebody, if it was a good interview or whatever, spend 20 minutes, do a little research yourself, or you can go the background check route if you can find a decent one. And um, that's a great way of making sure that you're kind of bringing, bringing good people on. The other thing, um, the kind of ground rule or something you must do for this to work better is you gotta be a leader. For all this stuff to work, you have to be a leader. Your guys have to respect you. And one of the best ways of being a leader when you're running dispatch or you're running this business, put yourself in their shoes. And ask them, it's one of my favorite questions. What can I do to make your job, what can I do to make your job, to, to, to make your job easier? And slash or more effective. That's you coming to them. That's you telling them, hey, I've been on the truck, I've done this. Have you made any observations? What, what can I as a leader do? What tools can I provide you? What time slots can we shift around maybe? What, you know, what are you observing here that we might be able to change up to make your job easier or to allow you to be more effective? Put yourself in their shoes and ask those questions and that's gonna help out a lot. Now, the key thing on putting yourself in their shoes, look at a schedule, guys. Look at a schedule. If you've got a job that's gonna be loading up a bunch of railroad ties right there at the beginning of the morning, and then they got an attic clean out job up in the, and it's the middle of summer, it's 130 degrees in an attic, and then they're following it up with a, a fence tear down and removal in somebody's backyard, that's a hell of a day. That is a hellish day. And you yourself might go out and do that job and might have, but if there are alternatives to maybe distributing that load to a different crew, possibly doing one of those jobs on a different day, uh, if there's something that can be done to keep them from being not just completely wore out, then, uh, then, then that's something you should, you should try and do. If it's, a, if it's a bed bug job, you gotta make sure they've got all the proper stuff so they don't bring bed bugs home. Um, 
you basically, you just need to think about how's it, play their, this, their day through your head and have an understanding of how their day is going to go. And uh, be tough on them if they need to be, you know, if they need a little tough love, because it's, it should be an easy day and they're going slow. But be understanding if it's a really difficult day and be rewarding, um, you know, if it's, if it's a really difficult day. Uh, and recognize their, 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 uh, their achievements and what they got going on. And that's actually the next thing here, recognize and reward. So it is easy as leaders, as business owners, when we've got bills to pay, we've got goals and ambitions, and you look at something and you recognize when somebody's doing something wrong, it's very easy for us to go up to them and correct them on it. And they should be corrected. What we also oftentimes notice as business owners, or what we don't do, is we don't recognize and reward when they're doing good things. And if, if all the time, if every time they hear from you is something negative, man, you're just, going, you're just, you're just breaking that guy or girl. You know, they, they don't want to, they're not going to hear you. They're not going to be around you because every time you turn around, you're critiquing them. Um, if, if you, about every three times, if you reward somebody, you know, at least every, maybe three times, or recognize reward every, you know, two or three times for every one time you criticize them, this is going to be a pretty happy person. They're going to know you're fair. Oftentimes what business owners do is they, rec is they see somebody doing something right and they don't go out of their way to actually recognize that individual or reward them. And when I say reward, a $25 Visa gift card, or if you like JRA, you know, we kind of up the game a little, we do a $50, $50 uh, Amazon card. Um, that goes a long way. Goes a long way for most of these guys. They're getting recognition. They're getting the reward. We got a question? We got, we got a couple, couple comments. comments. So Steven South says, great information. Uh, Juan from Bay Hauling says, other team members really dislike the pickers on the team because they slow down the workflow going through things. Time theft. He also says, Lee, the video training series is gold. I suggest everyone watching makes the investment. Great info. Very good. We did we not, not tell him to type that up, so appreciate that one. So, good stuff, guys. Appreciate your comments. Appreciate you watching today. The, um, one of the biggest things here is set clear expectations and guidelines. Be fair to your people. Recognize good work. Reward them for good work. And uh, don't be afraid. To, don't, when you're growing, you're going to have to turn some of this stuff over. You can't be the one taking all the money, getting all the payments. You can't be the one taking all the phone calls, and you certainly can't be the one going out and carrying out all the jobs. You're going to have to have employees. Guys, you can expand to multiple locations, different cities, junk doctors. We're in we're three cities, two and a half hours apart. Uh, we have a, a supervisor, which essentially gets paid a few dollars an hour more at both of those locations to kind of run the day-to-day, -day, deposit money, make sure we're inventoried up. Christian goes there normally once every 10 days, sometimes once a week, but once every 10 days. Checks in to see how stuff's going, sees how the truck looks, makes sure just things are running pretty smoothly. Everything else we do from our main office, two and a, in case of Charlotte, two and a half hours away from Charlotte. We take customer calls, we do customer follow-up calls, making sure they're happy. We do the dispatch off from there, uh, but we're checking those end-of-job pictures. We're doing those follow-up calls. Uh, we're tracking average time on job. And if these numbers are where they need to be, the chance of theft is super low. Can it occur? Yeah, sure. And listen, you're not going to catch everything. Just know from, from just be 100% confident that at some point you're going to be stolen from it. You're probably never even going to know. Uh, the only way, you're, you, for the most part, that you catch employees doing this is trends. If you have one guy that goes out and he does a little cash thing one time, you're not going to catch that. You're just not. But the problem is, the thing is, though, if they get away with it once, then they start doing it again and again. That's when the numbers start getting off. That's when the, you see the trend. And then at that point, that's when you can address it. You've got to, got to, got to hire people. You've got to implement systems and processes if you're going to grow this business. Otherwise, you're going to be a slave to your business until eternity. And actually want to be eternity because nobody's going to be able to do this forever. Very few people are going to be able to haul junk on their own forever. At some point, you're going to get burnt out. At some point, you're going to get old and injured. When I say old and injured, guys, it's like 35. I mean, all right, you have professional football players that are completely done by the time they're 32 or 35 years old. Uh, a lot of this junk removal stuff is tough. It is heavy lifting, hot environments. By the time you're 35 years old, a lot of you guys ain't going to be in shape to do this anymore. And those that, that you are, well, just count your blessings because you're lucky that you are. But at some point, by the time you're 45, 50, something like that, you're going to, you just, you ain't going to be able to do it anymore. You got to have employees to grow and to, to get a successful business and live your best possible life. Any final questions before we wrap up? Uh, guys, um, 
one shouted out that training series in there. Uh, we that is the in terms of JRA projects we've done together, or any project that I've kind of put together uh, personally. Though the truck stuff will probably surpass it, but at the moment, that's that's really uh, the one one of the things we've done. I'm probably the most proud of. It was a ton of effort, Matt. Uh, Matt did an amazing job. We, we had a lot of long nights putting that thing together. The information in it is unreal. Like if I had that information 10 years ago, um, well, somebody would put it out, probably never would have started JRA, but I've been able, if somebody never started JRA and all they put out was that, uh, that training series, probably by year five, we could have moved on to locate, better locations, more franchises, more, or, or franchises, we never franchised. We could have franchised, we could have done multiple locations, whatever, we could have grown so much quicker if that information was available. It took us five, six, seven years to learn it. It took us uh, like nine months to actually develop it into a series. Uh, it'll probably be a long time for we ever recoup our investment that we put into that thing to build it. But I think you're gonna find it extremely valuable. We're very proud of what we did here with it. And that's the reason I keep going on about it. And I hope it helps a lot of people. I'm Lee Gobbo with Junk Removal Authority. Every Tuesday, 12 noon Eastern time, we talk a little junk on Let's Talk Junk. Uh, and Junk Removal Authority, of course, we're always, uh, helping junk removal business owners make more money and live a better life. We'll see you next week. Junk removal business owners, the complete training series for the junk removal industry is out. Learn how to get more customers, grow faster, build an amazing team, get off the truck and make more money. Check it out.